welcome to worship this morning. Yes, good morning again. I'm good and loud, Tim. I'm just right. Yeah, there you go. Everybody will hear me. That's right. You've got the hearing aids going for sure. Okay. So, welcome this morning. A great day. We're into September already. Wow, hard to believe. September 11th. The uh, day is, uh, we're going to be using with the one voice service of the word. And this is the 14th Sunday after the Pentecost. So, again, cruising along through the summer. We're continuing this theme of the season of creation and the burning bush, the idea of listening to the voice of creation. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more today. And uh, we're going to begin with this welcome, and then we'll, and I think it's a welcome, and then the gathering song. Yep. I invite you to rise for our welcome. We gather in the name of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer of the earth and all creatures. Praise be to the Holy Trinity. God is sound and life, creator of the universe, source of all life, whom the angels sing, wondrous light of all mysteries, known or unknown to humankind, and life that lives in all. Let us sing our gathering hymn, Let the Whole Creation Cry, number 876. cry glory to the Lord on high heaven and earth awake and sing praise to our almighty King praise God angel hosts above ever bright and fair in love Sun and moon lift up your voice, night and stars in God rejoice. Servants striving for the Lord, prophets burning with the word, those to whom the arts belong. Add their voices to the song. Powers of knowledge and of law to the glorious circle draw. All who work and all who wait, sing the Lord is good and great. Young and old, raise the anthem loud and bold, and let children's happy hearts in this worship take their parts. From the north to southern pole, let the mighty chorus roll. Holy, holy, holy one, glory be to God alone. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. You are the treasured people of the Lord. A people holy to the Lord our God. Keep the words of the Lord in your heart. Teach them to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you are rest. One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. 
we sing our scripture song, Salvation Belongs to Our God. Salvation belongs to our God and to Christ the Lamb forever and ever. Great and wonderful are your deeds, O God of the universe. Just and true are your ways, O ruler of all the nations. Sing the glory of your name. Salvation belongs to our God and to Christ the Lamb forever and ever. For you alone are the Holy One. All nations will draw near. Just and holy works have been revealed. Salvation belongs to our God and to Christ the Lamb forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together our prayer of the day. O oh God. Overflowing with mercy and compassion, you lead back to yourself all those who go astray. Preserve your people in your loving care, that we may reject whatever is contrary to you, and may follow all things that sustain our life in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated for the first lesson. Thanks to Keith for reading today. Well, the first reading this morning is from Jeremiah chapter 4, verses 11 to 28. At that time it will be said to this people and to Jerusalem, A hot wind comes from me, out of the bare heights in the desert towards my poor people, not to winnow or cleanse, a wind too strong for that. Now it is I who speak judgment against them. Look, he comes up like clouds, his chariots like the whirlwind. His horses are swifter than eagles. Woe to us, for we are ruined. O Jerusalem, wash your heart clean of wickedness so that you may be saved. How long shall your evil schemes lodge within you? For a voice declares from Dan and proclaims disaster from Mount Zion, Ephraim. Tell the nations, here they are. Proclaim against Jerusalem. Besiegers come from a distant land. They shout against the cities of Judah. They have closed in around her like watchers of, in a field because she has rebelled against me, says the Lord. Your ways and your doings have brought this upon you. This is your doom, how bitter it is. It has reached your very heart. Sorrow for a doomed nation. My anguish, my anguish, I writh in pain. Oh, the walls of my heart, my heart is beating wildly. I cannot keep silent, for I hear the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war. Disaster overtakes disaster, the whole land is laid waste. Suddenly my tents are destroyed, my curtains in a moment. How long must I see the standard and hear the sound of the trumpet? For my people are foolish, they do not know me. They are stupid children. They have no understanding. They are skilled in doing evil, but don't, do not know how to do good. I looked on the earth, and lo, it was waste and void, and to the heavens, and they had no light. I looked on the mountains, and lo, they were quaking, and all the hills moved to and fro. 
I looked, and lo, there was no one at all, and all the birds of the air had fled. I looked, and lo, the fruitful land was a desert, and all its cities were laid in ruins before the Lord, before his fierce anger. For thus says the Lord, the whole land shall be a desolation, yet I will not make a full end. Because of this the earth shall mourn, and the heavens above grow black. For I have spoken, I have proposed, I have not relented, nor will I turn back. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we'll read uh, Psalm. We have, we have some special music here, Keith. Sorry, I didn't yeah. tell you. So That's good. This is a song from the ACS, the All Creation Sings. And so the streamers thought we would, <laughs> we would sing this just as a way to introduce some of the music from the, from the new hymnal. Do abominable, abominable deeds. deeds. 
There is no one who does good. The Lord looks down from the heaven on humankind to see if there are any who are wise, who seek after God. They have all gone astray. They are all alike perverse. There is no one who does good. No, not one. Have they no knowledge, all the evildoers, who eat up my people as they eat bread, do not call upon the Lord? There they shall be in great terror, for God is with the company of the righteous. You would confound the plans of the poor, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that deliverance for Israel would come from Zion. When the Lord restores the fortunes of his people, Jacob will rejoice. Israel will be glad. Amen. Amen. The second reading is from 1 Tim Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 to 17. Gratitude for mercy. I am grateful to Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has strengthened me because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service. Even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason I receive mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to rise as you're able for our gospel acclamation. Word of life, Jesus Christ, all glory to you. Word of life, Jesus Christ, all praise. Gospel according to Luke, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable, Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over the ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it. When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to, you, to you, O Christ. Christ. I invite you to be seated.
bought these mitts brand new last year kept my hands warm and all that but I have a problem it's not just the phone <laughs> I have a problem I lost the other one and you know what I, I thought I found it on the trail last winter I thought I saw a black thing on the trail last winter and I was looking I've been looking and looking for this glove this other glove this glove I haven't been looking so much for this one but this one and um, so I, I thought I saw it on the trail walking toward the church you know in the middle of winter there was a black glove there and I went oh I think that's mine so I made sure I walked by that mitt and nope that was someone else's glove uh, so I'm still in search of that glove I uh, haven't given up on this one but I really need this one <laughs> either that or you know keep it in the pocket kind of a thing and you know just I'll just have to fish with one hand I guess like this but the uh, and, and I've looked through my jacket pockets each parka that I have each kind of work jacket I have under the seats of the, my truck under the seats of the car uh, in boxes high and low and I cannot find my other glove so and this I don't think is a case of you know getting old I don't think so but that's a whole another thing but uh, that happens too right Honey, have you seen my hairbrush? <laughs> that was a conversation in our house this morning. <laughs> and what? Oh, and your scissors. That's right. Where are your scissors? Uh, so, uh, I mean, sometimes we simply misplace things. And uh, as we get older, uh, yes, sometimes... Uh, we put things in wonderful places that are for safekeeping and who knows where we've put them. So I'm, I'm still holding on to this in, in hope that, you know, maybe it's one of those things, but not so sure, not so sure. But if I do find it, there will be rejoicing. Yay, you know, I got my mitt back, right? So, so we all have these times of losing things and finding things and uh, more often probably losing things than anything. But the, the, the lesson today is interesting because you have the lost sheep and the lost coin, absolutely, so the people are, are looking for them. But the, the beginning, the very beginning and the very ending of the <laughs> parable of the lost coin bring us into something a little different dynamic because Jesus is speaking to the scribes and Pharisees. He's speaking to the scribes and Pharisees and telling them about this you know telling them these two parables and then at the end it says you know uh, there will be much rejoicing over one sinner who repents you know than the 99 righteous persons that that type of a thing and so this is I'm a little out there for Jesus because he's he's really aimed this at the Pharisees and scribes who claim to be in the know because who is this that eats with the sinners and the tax collectors? That's their accusation. Jesus responds with the parables of the lost coin and the lost sheep. And so implying, implying that who's, who's, who's lost here? Mm, the scribes and the Pharisees, right? Ooh, you know, the drama heightens here, right? I mean, that's... That's, uh, you know, very poignant, you know, very pointed toward the Pharisees. And they're, they're looking back at him going, what are you t who are you talking to, right? What do you think you're talking about? And so there's that dynamic that's going on between Jesus and the Pharisees all the way through. And so the idea of creation I want to bring into this too. Uh, so it's a contentious issue. It's a contentious issue. The scribes and the Pharisees in their own day, they wanted to protect what was theirs. They wanted to protect their way of being, uh, the, the, the way they had things worked out for temple worship and, and uh, all of the laws, cleanliness, and all these things. 
had that all figured out. Now Jesus was coming to say, you're the lost ones. Hmm, okay. So, uh, in the sense of creation, I hear a lot of that now too. Uh, we had a conversation just this morning of, of an article that talked about uh, 1.5 degrees of Earth's increase in temperature is about all the Earth can stand, and that's really the point of no return. The permafrost is melting, which means no access to the north, which means more carbon gases being uh, emitted and uh, more microorganisms decaying the, mic the, the, the organic material in the, in the permafrost, so more carbon being uh, e er, released yeah, into the atmosphere. Um, we, we know about seawater rising, islands losing land, we, we know about the temperatures rising. We certainly know about droughts. We certainly know about um, very strong wind climate events. The weather is like out of control. Uh, and I think we have to do something about it simply because we got to get the wind, wind speeds down so I can go fishing again. Because it's just too windy out there most of the time to go fishing already. But that's been for three years. Is there something to that? Three years of wind? I, I don't know. So, what, what are we doing? And can we, we live in a world where fossil fuels rain, for sure. Uh, and so there's some self-protectionism there. We hear that. Yes, for sure, we're hearing that. And uh, the, the idea of change. And the idea of what do we do next? Um, apparently Hawaii is doing a wonderful job of uh, doing their renewable resources. They're ahead of leading in the world of, of renewable resources and way ahead of their, pro their projected things of 1940, 1940, 2045 uh, and 2035. And so they're way ahead of their projections of reduction of emissions. And so this season of creation is meant to open our eyes. And I know this isn't everybody's shtick. And I know there's lots of people that going, I don't think it has anything to do with anything. The polar caps come and go. That's true. That's true. Uh, and at the same time, is there something we can do about it? Uh, there is a way for us to slow down emissions and reduce the temperature of the world, or at least keep it at keep it at certain levels. Um, the idea of looking back in the mirror here on creation is a very interesting, a very interesting perspective. And by the sounds of it, once it's lost, you just can't get it back. That's like getting old maybe, but anyway. Have you noticed, in my joke, have you noticed if, the, if you Google the phrase lost medieval servant boy do you know what it comes back with this page could not be found <laughs> so my friend David he lost his ID last night now he's just called Dav <laughs> no ID in David so he's just Dav now yeah you can't get it back so <laughs> a little late laugh there that, that's good I like that so this is what Jesus was encountering this kind of pushback is what Jesus was the same thing we're getting with climate change and it's interesting how we'll believe scientists uh, about how the earth was created but not so much about climate change you know so it's easy to follow the scientists when um, you know, we talk about the whole universe being created and now there's no God in it, but it's not so easy to believe the scientists when they say this. Oh, how, how do we reconcile this? Okay? And so, uh, in, in the same way, religiously, we do the same thing religiously. So we 
often speak out of the both sides of our, our mouths, right? And, and so here, Jesus is saying clearly to the Pharisees, um, something's going to change here, and he needs to change. Something needs to change. And when you tell someone to change something in their religious beliefs, that's a tough one, right? You, you've got chaos in the world. And, but if you, t- if you uh, not but, and uh, when we try to ish- usher in that change, you receive, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, pushback. Prophets, Jeremiah. Did you hear the words of Jeremiah today? That wasn't a lot of good news. Jeremiah was telling the people, hey, things are going south. Things are going south. And God sent Jeremiah to tell the people, it's really gone south, folks. And you really, we really got to do something. It's, it's, it's too late almost. But I will reserve the final end. That's what Jeremiah says. And so the, the people at that time were definitely falling away. And so there's always these big times in, in, in our society, community, generations, the highs and lows in certain ways we do things. There's definitely that. And then we will often use things to justify, to keep going on. This is how we used to do it back in the good old days, right? And I always talk about that from the perspective. We had this conversation in the music committee the other day. Did you know that even Amazing Grace was a new hymn one time? Did you know that? That was new one time. It's one of those new songs from that new hymnal. One of those new ones. But it caught on. You know, uh, we do things like this in the church, you know, and, and, we're, and, and in our lives, and are very slow sometimes to take certain things in. And yet other things, if we, once they're there, to remove them is whew, really scary. I know uh, I had a, a service that I was preparing with a family once, and they said to me, when did you change the Apostles' Creed? I went, ooh, that was about 1978. <laughs> that was a while ago. Yeah. And one of the hymns that we were looking at in the All Creation Sings, I think even that one today, I, I, better, I better look at it just to make sure I'm right. But I think it's new. 1084. Written in 1967. So, in the church time, that's, uh, well, that's new. That's new. Yeah, Amazing Grace is a little bit older than that. But I, I remember seeing that at the time going, oh, this new hymn isn't exactly new. But uh, it, it does. It takes us a while to gear into things. Now, where I want to turn this in to is what Jesus is calling us into to make sure we're always self-reflecting, right? Martin Luther, same thing, the Reformation, to always be reforming, not to get stuck in the ways of the way we always do things, but to be always reforming and thinking things through because there's always new things in the world. Uh, Climate change is one of those things, whether you believe it or not, um, uh, we're, we're, we're talking about, right? But you can't deny the fact that the, global, the globe is warming. Is there something we can do? What's a faithful response? How can we, how can we respond to this? And so, from a perspective of who God in Christ is, our faithful call to creation has always been and always will be stewardship, right? Care of God's creation care of, of all of God's creatures. And so we're using this month to make sure we, we do. We take care of these things and, and we find new ways to respond. On the path, new, on the path going down uh, past the ACT Park and down past their uh, Memorial Cooley, I think it's called, they're planting new trees down in there, some nice new fir trees they're planting down in there. And I thought, right on. That's good to be able to continue on with, with uh, more green growth in our world. So the challenge becomes, 
What is our stewardship call? What is our faith response to, to all of these things? Do we simply just let it all happen and no response? Or do we challenge ourselves to, to find out? Find out. This is who Jesus is in the sense of newness of the world. It's not the end of the world yet. God reserves that, right? God reserves that. But our call to be faithful witnesses to the gospel, the good news, and to God's creation is clear. It's clear that this is who we are as God's people. And so uh, I invite you to take the time this month and in the, years, in, the, in the days ahead to stop and reflect and look at that footprint, to look at uh, our impact, but also to look at the impact of our Christian faith on society. Because often, that has been something that's been more negative than positive. And so the, the shoulds in, in what we put into religion are often what makes people back off. Whereas the gospel, the gospel is a welcoming, growing, living, organ, organic thing that grows and lives in us and thrives. So may we find a new way to thrive in creation, to thrive as, as Christians and challenge ourselves to, to live in harmony, not just with creation, but also with our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our hymn of the day, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is, number 502. And I'm going to sing this gloved. <laughs>
within thy house forever. Our profession of faith, you're going to find this, uh, uh, this comes from the Seasons of Creation's Resource. It's not the Apostles' Creed. So, next slide, please. Together we confess. We believe in God, who creates all things, who embraces all things, who celebrates all things, who is present in every part of the fabric of creation. We believe in God as the source of all life, who baptizes this planet with living water. We believe in Jesus Christ, the suffering one, the poor one, the malnourished one, the climate refugee, who loves and cares for this world and who suffers with it. And we believe in Jesus Christ, the seed of life, who came to reconcile and renew this world and everything in it. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the breath of God, who moves with God and who moves among and with us today. We believe in everlasting life in God, and we believe in the hope that one day God will put an end to death and all destructive forces. Amen. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Sisters and brothers, rejoice. Mend your ways. Encourage one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of that peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. I invite you to be seated. And for uh, a, this, again, there's a little video that uh, is accompanying the season of Creation Resource, and Tim's going to play that for us now. We recently recorded a version of Marvin Gaye's 1970s hit, Mercy, Mercy Me. Probably the best known soul song about the climate. When Marvin wrote this song 50 years ago, racial justice and climate justice were united in protest. But 50 years on, it seems to me that racial justice and climate justice are operating in parallel. If either is to succeed, does something need to change? For me, climate justice is a racial justice issue because actually many of the people that experience the worst impacts are black and brown people. So if you're thinking globally, we know that it's people living in the global south, living in countries in Africa, in Bangladesh, in parts of Asia, in the Pacific Islands, those are the people that experience it the most globally. But here in the UK, again, it is the poorest communities that are experiencing the worst impacts. And when things get tough, it is poor communities that, that experience the worst of it, as we saw with coronavirus and the pandemic. And it will be that again. And so for me, this is a racial justice issue because it is an inequality issue and we are Christians and we know that we, have, we serve a God of justice and so we have got to get this thing sorted because if we don't it is going to be the poor people, the black people, the brown people who are going to be affected worse. The climate crisis affects us all but disproportionately impacts countries in the global south. 
it brings increased extreme weather events like floods, droughts and hurricanes. And the countries hit hardest by that are the developing ones. For Global South, I must say it's a reality. And I'm from Dhaka, Bangladesh. Uh, it's one of the most climate vulnerable countries in the world. For us, floods, cyclones are more intense, are more frequent. After a disaster, people try to cope. So in many cases, they marry off their young girl. They send off their young son to work. So they are out of school, both of them. It's not something anyone wants to do, be a bride maybe at the age of 12, 13, and become a bread earner at the age of 8, 9, 10, which is really, really difficult. Marvin Gaye spoke of poison is the wind that blows. Today, that poison is what we're doing to our atmosphere. Vast, energy-hungry, developed economies, the pollution that that brings. Many of those effects cannot be undone. For example, loss of life, loss of biodiversity, lo loss of ecosystem. So in many cases, these are not to be avoided or will not be avoided. The countries suffering don't have the resources to deal with the devastating effects. Developed nations made a promise to provide $100 billion of support for developing countries by 2020. They didn't deliver that. These people who are suffering the worst impacts of climate change contributed least to the problem. So it's a, an obligation for the global leaders to come forward and act accordingly. We have been talking about climate change loss and damage for more than two and a half decades now. Still, I would say no tangible support we have received. And without the financial support that was promised, what will life look like? If we do not take the action, as we from Global South, we shall be more, more, more in danger. When a uh, UN uh, was created, some countries were not existing, and now they're existing. So I believe if we do not take the action, we shall go back in the life of not existing again. If the temperature keeps rising, there will be no mercy, only misery for millions. David Attenborough is not alone in pointing out that it's the moral duty of richer nations to help the poorer ones. It's about justice, and justice is about making reparation, making reparation for the damages that you've done. The countries from the global south who are suffering because people in the north are creating the problem, creating the pollution. And so if you're going to fix the problem, you have to use the wealth that's being created off the back of these poor countries and distribute it. So it's about redistribution of the wealth that's coming there and to uplift those countries. And so to mitigate against climate injustice, racial injustice, we have to be able to help those countries financially. Civil rights was the fight of Marvin Gaye's time. Climate justice is the fight of our time. Racial justice and climate justice are again today merging. We know that we need to do our bit in our own lives, but we also need to put consistent pressure on our leaders to do their bit. Okay, so just included that video from the season of creation. Again, just as some information, uh, ways we respond to think about in our own offerings, our own ways of living out our lives, our own stewardship. So uh, just, just as, a, as a call to think about such things. The next slide, the thanksgiving for the earth. I thought there were bolded parts of this. Maybe there aren't. All right. Let's read this together. Remember the fruits of the earth for sowing and for harvest. Remember the dew of the air. Remember the downcoming of the rains and the waters and the rivers. Remember the plants and the blooms of every year. Remember the safety of humans and of animals and of me, your sinful servant. For the rain, the wind of the sky, sea, plants, the fruit of the trees, and also the vineyards, and for every tree in the entire world. We are grateful for the Holy Trinity who brings us to perfection and safety and peace, forgive us our sins, brings us up according to their measure that we may grow and prosper through your grace. Who makes the face of the earth to rejoice, waters her furrows, lets her grain be abundantly multiplied 
and makes ready her seed time and harvest. We give you thanks. Our offertory hymn, I invite you to rise as we sing our offertory hymn, Glory to You, God. Glory to you, God, for yours is the earth, yours the anointing, the radiant word, ours the rejoicing. For spirits aflame, ours the thanksgiving to your holy name, ours be the telling of deeds greatly done, yours be the glory, O God. pray. God, our creator, you open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living creature. With these gifts, we bless you for your tender nurture and care. Help us to delight in your will and walk in your ways through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we pray. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. Your people receive mercy and grace overflows in our lives. Fill your church with faith and love and give understanding to hearts to those who work to strengthen our ecumenical and interreligious commitments. God of grace, hear our prayer receive our prayer. Your creation groans as it suffers the impacts of pollution and lack of care. As the seasons change, renew in us the will to protect plants, animals, and habitats. Bless us with bountiful harvests that all may share. Merciful God, your world is shattered and the nations rage. Remember us in your mercy. Teach wisdom to our elected leaders so that we know peace in our world peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. Merciful God, your children wander homeless and the hungry cry for bread. Seek out those who are lost or lonely, anxious or depressed, or struggling with addiction or, an, or illness. Provide for those in any need. We lift these, your people, to you. Ted Reeves, Melvin Larson, Connie Angel, Norma Erickson, Martha Rooney, Helen McGovern, Ruby Martinson, Deanne Larson, Dorothy Carlton, Arnold Lang, Shirley Wengel, Eric Oliver, Lloyd and Erla Meyer, Glenn Moan, Faye Silser, Laverne Silser, Alan Sunby, and Isabella Sunby. In our care facilities, Lori Dombrowski, Burnett and Arlene Olson, Rose Poe, Jake and Margaret Dick, Jean White, Clarence Lenz, Artis Wall, Jean Garthus, Marlene Arndt, John and Drinda Koenig, Val Morstead, Tracy Moan, Gladys Moan, Martha Weinbender, Ellie Moe, Irene Sunby, Ray Item, Shirley Fraser, Ruby Wengel, Kathy Berg, Evelyn Semft, Lillian Bazandowski, Jean Straub, Louise Bush, Esther Hagen, Jenny Fontaine, Val Reed, Marion Soberg, Margaret Elias, Helen Sather, Edna Hopke, and Isabel Swanson. We lift these, your people, to you, O oh God, and we pray that you provide for any of these in need. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Your work is done in this congregation with our hands, feet, voices, minds, and hearts. Build up the ministries of this community and that we may serve our neighbors and welcome the stranger in your name. We think of our Swift Current and Area Ministerial Association, and especially in our partnerships with St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church today. May you continue to inspire and lead them in pro the proclamation of the gospel. Merciful God, we give you thanks for the gift of life on this creation. We give you thanks today for the birthdays of Doris King, Charlene Friesen, Haley Jones, Lida Lenz, 
Debbie Unger, Laura Downey, Jacob E. Davey, Brian Potter, and Joy Moe. And anniversaries, Janelle and Derek Larson. We pray, O oh God, that you would sustain and keep them, and they would also work to sustain and keep all, that all may continue to strive for lives together. Merciful God. We pray, O oh God, for the royal family on the passing of Queen Elizabeth II. We pray for the new king, King Charles III, for a reign of justice and peace. Merciful God. Your blessed saints who have died now rest in your presence, O God. Give us thankful hearts for those who have been examples of faith in our lives and receive us with joy when we come to share eternal life with you. And we think today especially the family of Alan Oliver and Jerry and family on his service yesterday. We pray that you continue to be with the family. Merciful God. We offer this time of silence for all those prayers upon our hearts this day. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all of our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. Let's rise and we'll sing our final hymn too. Rise for the blessing as you're able. May the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending hymn is, Lord, speak to us that we may speak. Number 676. Lord, speak to us that we may speak in living echoes of your tone. As you have sought, so let us seek. Your strange children lost and lone. Oh, lead us, Lord, that we may lead the wandering and the wavering feet. Oh, feed us, Lord, that we may feed your hungry ones with you to be seated for a few announcements. Okay, so this week coming up, uh, office hours are back to regular Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, council meetings, Tuesday night at 7.30. Uh, that, no, sorry, 7 o'clock, not 7.30, 7 o'clock. So you erase that to, to 7 o'clock. 
Um, thinking of a Bible study on Wednesday, we're, we're, Sharon and I were going back on, so are we doing it in person or are we doing it a, 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 a over the phone? And I don't know the answer to that question yet. Those who are here for Bible study, do you want to meet in person or do you want to meet over the phone? Or do you want to do some kind of hybrid version of it where we have both? I don't know. We're thinking of getting it going anyways. You can let me know. Do I have to call it? Let's, let, let's do it in person, and uh, then we'll phone in as well. I'll have my phone with me, so we'll meet back here. The new Bible studies, I think, are in the office here, if you haven't gotten them already, okay? So th those are there. Hope Circle will meet on September 20th. September 20th, is, that's, that's the next week. That, oh, that's really looking forward. Okay. And uh, the Hope Circle is on the altars and flowers for September. Okay. Uh, volunteers need for a few things. The MCC thrift store and the, the, in the furniture store. Uh, there's a poster for that. Uh, another couple of things I want to mention as far as uh, things that we need some volunteers for. Um, the freezer there's a freezer needed. The refugee family needs a freezer. If anybody has a, a, a freezer to donate, that would be wonderful. Uh, that, that would help out a lot. Um, also, I have a couple of requests for people looking for rides to uh, Regina and one to Saskatoon. And so I really very much want to uplift. I know Andre is here hoping for a ride to Regina uh, sometime this week, if that's possible. Um, and also someone who's looking for some health, uh, going for some health procedures, looking for a ride this week. And so if you could let me know, uh, if you're willing to do that, uh, that would be very helpful. Next, oh, okay, Thursday, Thursday again, we're going to try and do a practice for our Save by Grace. I've booked us for the 22nd, I believe it is, in, at Cypress House, the play again. So hopefully harvest is over, <laughs> uh, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. But uh, anyways, we'll, we'll try and get together for practice at 1.30 on Thursday for, for a little prep. Other things going on, um, also next Sunday is a closing service for Clearwater Lutheran in Kyle. So there's a closing service for Clearwater Lutheran. So not the Zion Country Church, but uh, Clearwater Lutheran at 10.30 in the morning. Uh, Pastor Linda's been helping organize that along with the uh, chairperson, Ed Jacobson, and Bishop Sid's going to be there as well. And so um, you're, you're invited to come. There'll be coffee, <coughs> coffee service available afterwards. So that's, that's the idea. So uh, if, you are, if that's something that impacts you, you're most welcome to be there for service. I guess I'll skip it. <laughs> might have to be here maybe but so we'll see um, all those other announcements are in there I think we've been doing those for a while those are all self-explanatory are there any other announcements from the community all right very good if not I invite you to go in peace and serve the Lord thanks be to God